in my travels around the world, we can see that it's very similar problems that everybody is facing, particularly in the developing nations. You know, when there is a great need for the country to develop, immediately roads are being built, but they need to be safe roads. And when roads are built, you know, it's programs like the IRAP, which comes in and assess the existing roads, the infrastructure that is so necessary for a developing nation that they are done well. And when they are not, they have to be rectified. You know, we've had enough of talk. It's really excellent news that the global goals that have now been put in place to replace the Millennium Development Goals have now included road safety as one of the priorities. That's been one of our main objectives for quite some time, is to get road safety recognised as being a health and development issue. And now to have it as one of the goals is, is supremely useful for all of us in getting the political momentum behind it. It's an ambitious goal because to reduce by half the carnage on our world's roads by 2020 you know, is going to be very, very ambitious and difficult to achieve. But I think it's right and proper that we set our aim high and that aim has got to be achieved because we're talking about human lives as well as the economic benefits that would come from reducing the carnage on roads. Improving the safety performance of the 10% highest risk roads is a defined and affordable example of what we must aim for by 2020. The IRAP vision is for a world free of high risk roads. Our target is simple. We want to eliminate one and two star roads from the world's road network. Our assessments across over half a million kilometres of roads so far have identified 55% of roads are one and two star. That for me is an opportunity to save so many lives. Just one movement in star rating, we can halve the death rate on that road. This road is having one of the highest number of fatalities in the country. So during last three years, 650 people died on this road, 57 kilometers of the road stretch. That is most dangerous in India. The problem is to be resolved by redesigning the road and that's what we tried after IRAP has identified the problems through their uh, star rating. Now main concern of the design was to segregate the traffic, the slow moving traffic or the local traffic out of the fast moving traffic lanes. All these are likely to change the rating, the IRAP rating significantly. The FIA Foundation is announcing new funding for IRAP to help IRAP make its star rating protocols free to air so that anyone can use them, any government, any consultancy can access the star ratings and use them in the road projects that they're working on. And we think this will be a really important development to enable the widespread use and adoption of star ratings. And the other thing that we're announcing is funding to support the Three Star Coalition to really build up the advocacy campaign behind the minimum three star campaign to persuade multilateral development banks and governments that they need to get behind this and make it a priority action before 2020. We knew that when we designed uh, the, the, the RAP star rating system that we were dealing with low income and middle income countries who didn't have much capacity in this area. So we developed tools specifically for them. It was an unusual investment uh, by philanthropy, but it was done. And then we found that these tools could actually be applied very effectively in high income countries because very often small authorities don't have the capacity uh, either. And so what we have now is the paradox is that the tools uh, that were designed and targeted and tailored for low and middle income countries are now being increasingly applied in high income countries. And countries like Sweden gave us the metrics, the strategy, raise the amount of travel that is uh, undertaken on three-star roads or better. And if you hold that to hand as a guide, then the whole management of highway networks follows. 
So we are now on our way to a two plus one road, which is, which is a kind of road we have developed over the last few years. So we are now in the two side of the road. We have overtaking possibilities. We have a median guardrail eliminating the head-on collisions. So we have reduced the fatalities on these roads with more than 90%. Every year, more than one million lives are lost on roads throughout the entire world. And these deaths are commonly concentrated on busy, high-risk roads that only have a one or two star safety rating. In the United States, our states and safety agencies are now using the star rating system data to innovate safety planning and to help build international momentum in our efforts to help save lives. And I think probably one of the key issues that we see that happening is uh, speed, where we've been able to educate the community about what the problem with high speed limits are in some areas and with speeding over the speed limit. The community is well aware of what the issues are because of public education undertaken by the Transport Accident Commission. Vic roads have actually been able to, through infrastructure, either modified uh, roads and roadsides to better cope with speed or otherwise modify speed limits, particularly in high pedestrian and, and cycle areas. The way road safety built into the broader development goals, built into the fight against poverty, uh, is absolutely essential. When we work on transport programs, on road programs, it is becoming absolutely critical to factor in from the get-go a dimension that will ensure that the way we approach and design these uh, infrastructure programs actually will reduce road fatalities and injuries. What IRAP is really trying to help do is make sure that these countries that are developing very fast don't make the same mistakes that developed countries made in the past. That we leapfrog ahead, that we don't learn the hard lessons that many countries have learnt over time that we make sure roads have got footpaths, um, pedestrian crossings, bicycle lanes, safe intersections. Now, people cross, our, our road is tested, become an industrial area. And so, to me, this road really encapsulates the crisis that we're talking about. It used to be a two-lane road. It was widened to four lanes uh, through Chinese government grants. When it was two lanes, it was gridlocked. And gridlock has disadvantages economically, but it was actually quite good for safety because the cars are moving very slowly. You can see now these cars and lorries are traveling at 60, 70 miles an hour. And it just requires that we start thinking about roads in relation to people. The, the aim of a road, of a transport system, should be to enhance the quality of life. This is endangering lives. It's avoidable, it's unnecessary, and it's about time for aid donors and governments in countries like Kenya started thinking about putting them into place. At each day is crucial. Each day, 3,500 people die on the roads and uh, thousands of people are injured on the roads. We need to increase leadership. There is a, a lot of uh, communication, a lot of uh, meetings, a lot of debates, but uh, not uh, enough action. What you're seeing here is a vision of what can be. We can measure this. The International Roads Assessment Program have assessed roads across the world. And I would like to see across the world, leaders put their declarations into action. Let us see the roads built and let's measure them so that we can hold them accountable to show that they care for us and for our population, for our children, by building something so simple but so effective.